Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today I'm going to show you how to solder two wires together. And I know it sounds a little bit remedial, but it's good to have the basics mastered. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to concern ourselves with is soldering iron maintenance. Now this is not hot. I haven't turned it on. You can see right up there on the top of your screen it's not on. This is cool to the touch. Now the tip is lo very loose. See that? You can even hear it. It is super loose. This comes from the soldering iron heating up and cooling down and heating up and cooling down and this will eventually create the soldering tip to be loose. Now we can combat this by tightening that small standard screw. So you need a very fine standard screwdriver and we can tighten it back up. So now that that tight it doesn't want to move or wiggle anymore. See? Yeah. So that is nice and tight. Now we can move on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sandpaper the end here. Or you can use a sanding sponge like I have. Um, any kind of sandpaper will really work fine, not so fine. It, you're not creating a finish you're going to paint on, you're just removing um, some of the old solder that's on there, some of the old tinging. So we need to do that so that way proper heat transfers to our new solder that we're going to be working with. See how nice and clean the soldering iron tip is now? Make sure that it's still nice and in place, which it is. And then we need to clean it off with like a paper towel or something. Or a rag. There we go. So now your soldering iron tip is nice and clean. With your sponge nice and damp, we can put it back into its placeholder. Always solder with a wet sponge handy, or a damp sponge handy, because this is what's going to clean your soldering iron while you're soldering. Now with the iron properly serviced, we can turn on the soldering iron. I want to start with a low heat and let it build up slowly, and then I'm going to tinge the tip of the iron with some solder. You're always going to want to keep solder tinged to the end of the iron. This will help preserve the tip and keep it in good shape. So once our soldering iron has come up to temperature where it can in fact melt the solder, uh, we're going to want to tinge the end of it by putting a little bit of solder on it. Now it's a little too hot. See, you know it's hot, a little too hot because the, sp the solder will uh, kind of splatter all over the place. It means it's too hot and you should turn the iron down. So we're going to tinge the end of the soldering tip. This will keep our soldering iron in good condition. It's actually a little too much, but that's okay. We can wipe it off. There we go. That's better. So you just want to keep a bit of solder on the end of it. This will keep your soldering iron in good shape. So that is ready for us when we are ready to solder. Now you may be asking me why is it important to know how to solder in an automotive application. Well, here's a pretty good example. So I want you to use your imagination here and imagine this wire is a part of your wiring harness somewhere on your car or truck. Now, there could be a design manufacturer flaw, there could be something inside the wire that's not quite right, or more likely than not, it's up against something and that something is rubbing against it. So it chews through the wire a little bit, just, just a little bit every single day. So eventually, it will saw through to the point where uh, a bit of the wire is actually exposed. So eventually, whatever's rubbing against that wire will make it exposed. Because obviously, if you rub against something long enough, you're going to take enough material off to where this wire is exposed. And if that touches anything, it'll ground out and make a short, which can cause all kinds of problems. So before you start working on your vehicle, make sure you take off the negative battery terminal cable. And now what we need to do is remove this section of wire. And now that that section is removed, we can put another section in, or if there's enough slack in the wires, we can move them together and solder them that way. Um, but more likely than not, there's not going to be enough slack. So you're going to have to take another piece of wire and solder it in there. But once you know how to solder one connection, there's nothing stopping you from doing two. So let's get started. When it comes to soldering wiring, is learning how to strip the wire of its insulator. Now there are basically two types of wire strippers I've seen. There's this type that is adjustable with how you feel it, and then there's this type in the middle there that already has it uh, ready to go. I understand um, 
the thought process between both. I personally like these because you can really feel when the wire uh, bites through. So you want about, I don't know, anywhere between a quarter of an inch and half an inch of space to work. So you want to bite down till you feel it give way and then just pull the insulator off. It's really simple to do. Uh, this won't work. And with these, it's a little bit easier. So you just find the matching hole and clamp down and pull it off. See, this is, that's why I don't like really these. I can never rely on them to do 100% of the job, but it, it does work if you have them. I just prefer, these are a little bit more old school. I don't know, I, I feel like these work better. That's just my opinion though. So, I'm gonna show you both ways how to solder wires together and why I prefer one over the other. Now here's a way to solder that I do not agree with at all. I think it is totally wrong and I'll show you why. People that wrap it around like this. And it looks great in theory. You think, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be fantastic, and then you solder over it. And I'll show you why that doesn't really work so great. So I have the two wires wrapped together, which I've seen before in person, other people doing it. And the way they do it, which is wrong in my opinion at least, is having the soldering iron too cold, is they wrap it together like this and then like drip solder on top of it to connect the two wires together. See, when you solder this way, you just end up creating a giant ball of solder on the end of it and a lot of the copper coil underneath act like little tendrils and they stick through your insulator and ground out. It's kind of tough to see on camera. Make sure you leave a little bit of solder on the end of your soldering iron. Preserve it. Oh, that's perfect. Put that back in. I'm going to turn it down a little bit too. And when you're finished using your soldering iron, make sure you clean it off um, using your sponge. Now, you can't really see it on camera too well, but I can tell you in person that this is this is not very good. This this is not very good at all. Because when you wrap this in electrical tape or your insulator, um, yeah, that's already cool to the touch. So I can insulate it. There's little things that feel like look at that, that right there. That's gonna poke out and that is gonna poke right through your insulator and cause a short. Now both ways of insulating with electrical tape and heat shrink are valid. I prefer heat shrink, but I'm gonna show you electrical tape here first and on the other applications I'll show you heat shrink. So you wanna take a bit of electrical tape, not too much. You don't need to drown it in electrical tape. Just enough so it's all covered and pinched around. Now the electrical tape application is perfect, that's totally fine and acceptable, but this way of soldering, you can't see it but I can feel it right there, it's already starting to poke through this insulator a little bit. So you gotta imagine, you know, a little bit time has passed and there's some wear and tear on this insulator and no insulator is going to stand up to metal poking through it. Ow, ow, yep. So even rubbing my thumb just a little bit over this electrical tape just a few times has shown why this way of soldering doesn't work so great. Because you see that little piece of metal right there? Imagine that is in your car's wiring harness and this is against a form of metal, which is everywhere in a car, and it touches. You see how that would ground out and create a short and would cause all kinds of problems for you later on down the road, completing, completely negating this fix entirely. So I don't agree with this form of soldering. My next form of soldering I also don't agree with, which involves folding it over and twisting it, because it creates the same thing. Those little tendrils stick out and poke through um, your insulating material. Some people, not me, some people would have you put the wires together and twist them like this together and then solder them. Now in this perfect situation it seems to be okay. The problem with this is you get a lot of frayed ends on the copper cable. See how easy that is to fray? To come out like that? See that? 
Now if that pokes through your insulator, whatever you use over it, heat shrink or tape, that can poke through and cause a short. So that's my problem with it. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, solder this together. So we have our solder here, our soldering iron here, and we want to tinge the iron with the solder. Actually, that's a bit too hot. I'll turn that down. And then we can apply it to our wires here. That's too cold. You don't want to use too terribly much solder either. Kind of a less is more sort of thing. So this is one of the reasons I don't like this way of soldering. And it just kind of looks messy and it just doesn't look very good. Oh man. I don't usually solder this way, can you tell? Um, so yeah. It's basically what it ends up looking like. Kind of just like a big blob of solder because you apply it all in one go instead of in two different pieces. I really don't like that way. And when I put the insulator on, you'll see why. Okay, so I'm going to be using some heat shrink I picked up at a store called Micro Center uh, for $13. And this kit's actually really cool. It's got a lot in there. Uh, I know you can probably buy heat shrink for cheaper. You can get it on Amazon for pretty cheap, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I cut a piece of 3 8 heat shrinking on there because the opening is so wide you really you know you have to use something like that so I cut it down to size and I'm slipping it over leaving some at the end so that way I can hopefully seal that because again you don't want to short so you need a heat gun or I've even seen hair dryers work but I like heat guns they get hotter So there you go, those two wires are soldered together. Now I will guarantee you that this will make a connection um, and it'll work just fine. My problem with it is its durability. So there's a lot of sharp, you can't feel it, but I can feel it. There's a lot of sharp uh, edges on this solder just due to the way that you know coil is wrapped to make copper. It really wants to fray out and poke unless you lay them on top of each other and I can tell you right now just from feeling this eventually one of these little pieces of copper is going to poke through and create a short. I really can't demonstrate for you that because I can't demonstrate years of um, use in one video showing but I will guarantee you eventually it'll poke through this heat shielding or if you use, especially if you use electrical tape, electrical tape's even weaker uh, it'll poke through that no problem. So now that I've shown you the way I don't like it, I'll show you the way that I prefer and the way I think is um, correct. So this is the beginning of how you should solder two wires together. Uh, we have one of the wires here and I've twisted it together so that way it creates a nice uh, flat working surface on the wire here and nothing's poking out in any direction. So we want to tinge the top of the soldering iron here and then just apply it to our wire. You don't need a ton, and I see a lot of videos where people put like a, just a huge amount of solder. You don't need that much. So that is looking rather nice. Perfect. That's really what uh, you're going for there. Not a ton of solder. Now you want to do the exact same thing to the other wire. So imagine this is on the other side of the wiring harness. This is also a way you can do it without having you know, having to need three arms. Uh, I know I'm using a tool here, but if I didn't have to record it, I could easily do this um, without the tool. Getting my camera to focus on this is actually kind of tough because what I'm working with is kind of small. Don't forget to clean off your soldering iron tip. There we go. Because the wire is so small, the solder is already seeped into the braid, so don't worry about that too much. If you have thicker wire, you might want to hold the soldering iron on there a little more to make sure that it gets into uh, all the crevices it needs to. Now we can solder these two together. So the cool trick about this is now you can hold the wire with one hand and the soldering iron with the other, touch them together, and the soldering iron in there, and solder these two together. So now that our two ends are soldered 
we can solder them together. Just apply a little heat from the soldering iron. And that looks pretty good. Now if you're working in a automotive situation and both ends are connected to something, which is fairly likely, um, try to give them a little bit of a pull test. So you want to just tug on them lightly, don't hug to pull them. If they stay together, you're in good shape. Now, what I should have mentioned before I started soldering, I was actually a little bit eager, is you want to put your heat shrink on before you start soldering because obviously afterward you wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing currently, which is sliding it on from the other end. So you can even um, cut your heat shrink to length. I'm leaving it nice and long though. So there we go. Now we can use the heat gun to shriek, shrink the heat shrink. And there we go, that's how you can repair a wire inside your wiring harness on your car or truck. And that is a perfectly soldered together wire. Check that out. See how nice that is? It's just one wire now. So that's pretty cool. This application can be used on any wire on the car. So if you have a short somewhere, you've detected a short, um, this is basically how you fix it and put it back together. You know, likes wires obviously lead to likes. Don't do this. See that? Don't do that. See how much nicer this is? This is going to last way longer than this ever will. I can promise you that right now. So when we're done with our soldering iron, we need to clean off the tip here. So it's nice and clean and ready for our next soldering job. And then we can turn off the soldering iron and place this back into its home. And that's how you solder two wires together. Uh, it's important to do it the way I showed you how to do it with the wires laying on top of each other rather than the wires twisted together because you do get those frayed ends poking through which could cause a short, which is some big problems. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you next time.